Hey guys, this is Eve with Scrapbooking with me, and as promised, I wanted to show you something else you can do with these fine line applicators besides use them to put your glue in. I I have a um, let's see if I can find it right quick. Most all of my glue has the fine line applicators, so I don't. Well, I can't find it right this minute. But anyway, I have the fine line applicators for my glue, so. I per here it is right here. Da da. See, I have those. So that's what I use on my glue. So I don't need these for my glue. But I saw a YouTube video, and I have no idea. I, I tried to find her again the uh, last night, and I couldn't. I looked everywhere. I didn't didn't know exactly how to search for it so I, I looked and looked and couldn't find her so I did not originate this this is not my idea I found it from someone else and if I could find her YouTube video I would definitely give her credit for it but she had put in here I I'm not exactly sure if she just put modeling paste or if she put a combination of modeling paste and something else but I found when I just put modeling paste in here that it was a little bit too thick to come through this very very fine little tip so what I did is I took some modeling paste and some collage podge and I mixed them up and then I put that in here and what that does and I know a lot of times we we have all these dimensional things we have our our stencils and our mask and different things and we get all kinds of texture with our modeling paste but sometimes I have a stamped image that I'd like to stamp and I'd like to have some dimension on there or I might have my letters that I stamp and I want a little dimension on them so this is just a good way to do that and I and I don't have y'all have to excuse mine mine is not very good because I don't have a steady hand I have too much arthritis in my hands to have a steady hand but um, you know that's what I do it's fine with me but I'm sure you could do a much better job so just look at <laughs> the dimension of it and not necessarily if I stayed in line or not okay let's see if I there you go there's the dimension and I just sprayed it a little bit so you could see and you can put as many layers on here as you want um, after it dries put another layer just keep building it until you get it the height or the dimension that you want that's a couple of layers right there and then this is just a butterfly that I stamped and then I just put, you know, followed the lines as best I could. And um, I spritzed it a little bit so you could see it a little better. And then this is just some um, silks on the top of it. So I, I like it. I like the dimension. And this I only put one on, I think. I, I can put another if I want and make it a little bit higher. But that's, that's good for me. Um, but like I said, if you want more dimension all you have to do is just keep adding and I will try to show you like I said my hand is not the steadiest in the world but I'll show you as best I can you'll get the gist of it and get the idea anyway I think it's a, a cool technique and I'm glad that I learned it from her I wish I knew who exactly did that if anyone knows um, Put it in the comments. Put her channel in the comments and let everyone know. And as you can see, I didn't stamp that perfect, but that's fine because you're not going to see the stamp part anyway when I finish. So like I said, put I put about, oh, I guess maybe an eighth of a cup of light modeling paste, this Liquitex. And then I put the rest collage page and just mixed it up and then I used a little funnel and put it in here and then I shook it up really good and you know it works fine so far so I stamped my image and I just used some stays on ink you know I would use something that um, would kind of stay there something that because this does have some water in it so there's going to be if you don't use an ink that is water resist and there's going to be some mixing going on and you might not want that you could also color this up if you wanted to put some color in it color it up make it whatever color that you wanted okay let's 
let's see if I can do this without getting my head in the shot. So this has got some little intricate pieces and if you go too close to one of the other lines, it when it starts settling just a little bit, since it does have a liquid in there, it is going to kind of blend together. So that's why the the more intricate stamps and things probably would not be the best unless you did have a much steadier hand than me. And I hope you're seeing this. And you just press it just a little and the higher you hold it off of the the paper the more dimension you're going to get. She did this on some lettering that she had done and then let it dry and then did all kinds of techniques over the top of it and it was fantastic. It looked really, really good. Okay, that's it. And I know that's hard to see because it's white, but that is it. And you've got your dimension for your little flower and if you need to touch something up, just but that's it. And then when these dry, you can go in and put your center in there. I wouldn't put the center right now because it would probably merge together when it starts drying. But as you can see, there's some dimension there. And if you want more dimension, wait till this dries and put you another layer on top of it. And if you want to spray it, now on these when you finish, make sure you wipe that little tip off before you put your top back in and cap it you know keep it capped as much as possible and I cannot see to put this top back in it drives me crazy oh I guess that's why I don't use these other than for this okay we'll put that in later um let's see we'll spray it some color so that we can this is Empress Gold let's see what it looks like on here I don't know if I need to spray it before it dries, so let's dry it just a little bit. And you can dry the, if you dry them with a heat tool, they're going to draw up a little bit. So you may have to fill in some spots, but um, if you let it dry on its own, it doesn't shrink as much. But we want to try to spray it a little bit, so we're going to, and you could, you could use the same technique on wood pieces. Um, you know, some of these wood pieces are just about anything that you wanted. Anything that you can use modeling paste on or would like to use modeling paste on, you can use this on. Okay. I love these. This is the Prima um, Bloom Sprays. Color bloom sprays. Now I don't spray these like this because I get a lot of puddles and I don't like puddles. If you like puddles that's fine. I hold my paper up or I hold my image up and I spray it straight. Straight on. This one hasn't been used so I gotta pump it a little bit. Come on. You're coming. Here you go. Well Maybe not. When you know, did, does this always happen to you when you try to do a video? Something like this always occurs. Probably, probably left this one sitting too long. Let's see. Come on now. Usually these do not. There we go. I just didn't prime it enough. Started to say usually they do not stop up. And it wasn't. It's just that I had not used it before. Okay, so isn't that pretty? I love that Empress Gold. That's gorgeous. And if you want to dry it. And once you dry it, you'll see all of the glitter in there. They're my favorite sprays. I love Lindy's Stamp Gang. Love it, love it. But sometimes it's hard for me to do the pump because of my arthritis. So 
those are really really easy for me to do now look look at that Isn't that pretty? Look at all that glitter. I hope you can see that. Let's see if I can do my light just a little so you can get the... There you go. Isn't that pretty? And if you wanted this higher, if you wanted it, you know, just go over it another time with another layer. And you've got more dimension. You can see my hand is not steady at all. There you go. And you could try that and then spritz it again if you wanted to or put a little ink of gold or something on top of it just to make it stand out but as you can see the dimension. There you go. I hope you can see the dimension. Maybe. Let's see if you can see it this way. But I like using it this way. I like putting a little dimension on objects. Um, if I wanted to put a little dimension on this teapot, just I could just tap it in the little spots there or whatever. But Again, just a, a little bit of modeling paste. About a, until you use about a third of modeling paste and the rest, collage podge or mod podge, whatever. Mix it up and then put it in here. And that gives you just enough of the grab from the modeling paste to make it stay dimensional and not sink into your paper. But this paper, this is just plain paper. It doesn't have any anything on it, any sealer, anything on it, and it worked fine. I'm sure if you put sealer on there, it would probably work even better because your liquid wouldn't soak into it. It would sit on top. But there you go. I just wanted to show you. We do have these in the shop. I just got in a new shipment of them. So if you want some, they come two to a pack. And they're like this. So if you want some of these, come over and grab it. We also carry the modeling paste, the collage podge. Uh, Mod Podge, Gesso, just about everything. Anything to do these projects. So, again, guys, this is just very, very easy. Let's see if we can just write an E here. A name. Well, not perfect, but it's there. E. So, you could write with these and have your dimensional writing on your project. Um, like I said, color it before you put it down or after, whichever one you would want. I hope this helps somebody. hope you enjoyed it. If you do, give me a thumbs up and subscribe and I will try to come at you again with another tutorial. Talk to you guys later. Bye.